All right, y'all. I am super, super excited for our next speaker. Um, our next speaker loves DevOps, and when she's not writing code or automating something, she spends her free time training for triathlons. Wow. I hope they have a static web app page for their triathlons. Welcome to the show, April Edwards. Hey, Chloe. How are you? I am great. Thanks so much for joining us today uh, for SWA Conf. What are you going to be talking to us about today? So today we're going to talk about DevOps and enabling DevOps with Azure Static Websites because there are some amazing features baked into the product from day one that will enable everyone to embrace DevOps and get going right away with some CI CD. All right. I'm ready to learn about some DevOps. Take it away. <laughs> Awesome, Chloe. Thank you. All right, everyone. So as Chloe introduced, I'm April Edwards. I'm a senior cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And I come from this application transformation background. I've moved from ops into development. And I'm hot on DevOps because I have absolutely been through the pain. So we want to focus on how we can kind of enable real life DevOps with Azure Static Web Apps. So if I were to ask each and every one of you, you know, what is DevOps? I would absolutely get a very, very different answer. And that's okay. We all have different backgrounds and different life experiences when it comes to DevOps. So at Microsoft, we have this definition of DevOps. You may have heard it before, but it's always good to iterate again and again. DevOps is the union of people, processes, and technologies to, to enable continuous delivery of value to end users. Now, I really want to focus on this word value because it doesn't matter if you're shipping code or some kind of product or feature or anything else. Maybe you're delivering infrastructure to your organization and your end users. If you're not delivering value and they're not consuming it, then what are you actually delivering? Because they're not going to use the product. They're not going to use the feature. And there's no value attached to that. And we need to be delivering value to our organizations, whether it's internal users or maybe external end users and customers in the, in the world. And now DevOps is really this union of these three pillars because we need people and people, that's the hardest thing to change. We need buy-in from our organizations from the top all the way down and changing people and asking them to change how they do their day-to-day -day work is really tough, especially when they're moving to cloud. But this is a great time to look at the DevOps processes in your organization. Now, when we talk about processes, it's an iterative process. Maybe you're in a waterfall organization and you're looking to go agile, et cetera, whatever. These processes are continuous inter inter iterations and we're gonna kind of talk to them a little bit, but then we have these technology things. Now, a lot of us have probably done it. We've invested a ton of money into a technology that said, ah, that'll, that will help us. And it doesn't because we don't have those other two pillars in place. We need the processes and we need the people and we need the buy-in. And let's be honest, DevOps isn't magic and it's hard. It can be really hard, but there's ways to make it easier. And when I work with organizations and customers and they're like, you know, where do we start? What's a good place to start? When you have a new application or a new kind of reason in the organization, maybe you're moving from on-premises into Azure or into the cloud, you need to find those biggest pain points and start there. And you need to iterate over time and develop those processes. It's a constant iteration. And that definition of done is going to change based off of what you're trying to achieve. So it is a lot of hard work, but it's absolutely worth it because we know organizations that embrace DevOps culture and have the processes and the people buy-in and the tooling in those technologies are high performing organizations. Think about Uber, think about Domino's, think about Netflix. Like who remembers the old day of going to Blockbuster and renting a VHS tape or three? But now we have these high performing DevOps organizations all over the place. And it's because they've embraced these three pillars. Now, when we talk about DevOps, we talk about shifting left. Now, what does shifting left really mean? It means that we do things early and often, and we're ready to fail fast. Failing fast is my favorite favorite phrase to use. We have to embrace failure and learn from it. But doing things early on and being really proactive is super key in shifting left. We've all been on that project where we've shipped some code or done something, and then you have someone in the room that maybe works in the security area or project management or somewhere else who goes, well, hold on, what about this bit? And we've left things to the end. And that can cause a slew of issues. That can cause security breaches. That can cause issues in production. And those are more costly. So by investing that time early on, by shifting left as an organization, we plan, we design, and we involve every part of that organization into what we're delivering. So when we develop, when we develop what we're doing, we build it and we ship our code, we've had that forethought in the process. So remember, we want to fail left, fail fast, excuse me, but we want to shift left in our organization. 
So Git, uh, GitHub is a massive investment that Microsoft has made. Now, we know that GitHub is the largest developer community on the planet with over 50 million developers using that platform. And that's crucial because we're a firm believer at Microsoft of open source adoption, um, having the open source mindset and sharing and collaborating across the globe. And effective collaboration is a massive, massive uh, byproduct of this that we can develop within our teams and across other organizations. And we know that GitHub is this massive thing. So we've invested a lot in it. So as they've published the product, Azure Static Web Apps, we've built in some really cool capability. So because we know GitHub is a massive place for developers to, to work and share code and, and even put their even private code in repos, we built in some really cool pre-baked CICD capability into GitHub Actions. So if your code's already set in GitHub Actions, you, you have a really easy way to get started. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So anytime you make a code change and it's going to trigger something, right? It's going to trigger your build. It's going to trigger your CI, your continuous integration. And then it's going to push off to your continuous delivery. Now, you can do this in GitHub Actions. And we I really want to just say that GitHub Actions isn't just CI, CD. It's a whole workflow management system. So while you can do CI, CD, and that's really cool, you can do so much more with it and attach other workflows to this. But this is baked into the product. So we can connect more things in our project infrastructure, not just you know the whole CI/CD piece, but the whole project management system. Because the reality is, other parts of the organization are involved in our application delivery. And while GitHub is new and and shiny, and there's lots of things to do and build, we need to make the system even better. So GitHub has a lot of cool features, but it doesn't have everything baked into it. And we know that we recognize that. So we have Azure DevOps. For those of our customers that are fully vested into Azure DevOps as a platform, we've also enabled CI CD through Azure Pipelines using Azure DevOps. I apologize. I didn't come up with the naming, but bear with me. So you can use those pipelines. And we know Azure DevOps is a super mature product. You have things like Azure Boards so you can do your planning. And you know, if you need to focus on that workflow and collaboration, Azure DevOps is a great place to be. But we want you to take where your code is sitting, be able to deliver that, and deliver that to your Azure static website. So enough of talking about slides and all this other stuff. Let's get into an actual demo of how Azure static web apps work. So. I'm in the Azure portal now, nothing too fancy. Um, I've already pre-built a couple um, web apps just in case you know I'm doing my demo live and it all breaks. Because if you've ever seen one of my demos before, I always do it live and I like the DevOps on the fly. But I want to create a static web app. So I'm going to go ahead here in the portal, uh, look for a static web app, potentially. There we go. And I'm going to create a brand new static web app. Now, if you haven't done this before, I totally encourage you to, to get on with this and have a play because there's so much cool stuff baked into the product. And if you've been watching the whole conference, you'll have seen so many cool features and capability. So I'm just going to build out a little demo here. Now, what's really cool is when you build this from the portal, and if you think of how you've kind of deployed your apps in the past, you've had to have that forethought like, okay, we want to be a high achieving DevOps organization. We want to be more DevOpsy, but how do we do that? We need to look at infrastructure as code. We need to look at automation. Yes. And that takes a lot of forethought, a lot of planning, and maybe a lot of upskilling and learning. But if your code's already sitting in GitHub or Azure DevOps pipelines, we have some capability baked in here. And this is what's really cool. So we're going to take the example that you're using Azure DevOps pipelines right now. We select other here, and we build our static web app. So I can literally hit review and create, and it will deploy an Azure static web app. Now, when I do that, it's going to deploy this. Now, this was the one I've already pre-baked. Um, it gives me a URL. You can bring your own custom name to the game. That's totally okay. It will deploy your web app in a couple seconds, probably takes about 10, 15 seconds. Um, once that's done, we need to get this deployment, deployment token from the portal. So we need to take that deployment token, go over into our repo in Azure DevOps. Now, I've already built out my YAML pipeline, um, but we're going to need this management token. So usually I say copy and paste it, have it ready. Now, when working with YAML, the really cool thing is static web apps is available as a task in the port in the Azure DevOps portal. So you can go in here, add the task, add it into your YAML. Now, again, I've already pre-baked my YAML file. I have the task here for my Azure static web app. I can just define where my app location is, API location, and the output location. Now, this piece down here is your token. So remember that management token I just brought up a moment ago. You need to go in and add it as a variable. So here's my token. I've saved it in here. And that's how it's going to give that, that secure handshake from Azure DevOps pipelines to the Azure portal to your static web app. Now, you're right. 
this is a manual process and we want to automate all the things. So I have a cool little PowerShell task here that automates this. This is going to run a PowerShell script here. And what it's going to do is it's going to call that token in the portal and it's going to inject it into my pipeline because I want to automate everything. I don't want anything manual. So that first step was a bit manual, but this task will automate that for me in the future. Now, I know that there's a task coming down the line. They want to look to automate this a little bit more cleanly. Um, but yeah, so that task is going to do that for me. And the reason why this is really important, because a lot of the organizations that we work with have security requirements. So we've generated this token, but what if that token needs to change? What if we have to change it every week? Some organizations have to change it every single day. Um, this will go and fetch that token. And that saves me having to put it in because imagine if I had to do that manually, I'd lose that ability. So yeah, so having that ability to automate that, adding in a simple little PowerShell task, boom, we're done. So I'm going to go back to our portal here, look at our static web app. So that's the Azure DevOps pipelines method. Now I want to look at the GitHub method. So cool. I can sign into GitHub from the Azure portal. It authenticates through. Awesome. I just authorize my account. We're good to go. So it sees my GitHub account. Uh, all I need to do is set the organization, uh, set my repository. Now, again, my code's already sitting in, um, in GitHub. So don't need to go any further. Um, and then I can pick my branch. So if your organization has a, a multi-branching strategy, et cetera, um, you can go and do that there and set that in. Um, now this allows you to do a few build presets and all those other good stuff. So as soon as I hit the review and create button, this is gonna go spin up my static web app, cool. Um, but the other thing it's gonna do that's even cooler than that, it's going to generate an action for me. So this is the one I've already pre-built. As I built my action, it gives me the static web app workflow file. This is my CI uh, part, and then there's a CD part. So when I say it's already built it for me, I don't have to write any YAML because I always miss a space. I like I always miss a space. And as much as I love YAML, I love to hate it sometimes when I miss that space and spend a long time trying to find it. So this generates my workflow file, which is super, super awesome. I don't have to do anything. And as it generates that file and as it's deploying my static web app in Azure, it's running through this workflow. So we can see this workflow um, was the initial work workflow that I built when I stood up my website. So I have this website here. This is actually the website I built before. Um, I can open it up here. I can browse to it and go, right, I have a really cool website. Um, in the portal, after you deploy that, it also shows your workflow. So again, it shows me that YAML file that it's already done. I can see the GitHub action runs. And this is so important because we have full traceability of our source control when our CI process is running and when our deployment process is running. So that's great. Full traceability from end to end. And if your organization has any kind of compliance requirements and traceability, boom, here you go. So that's all baked in. So we have our website. Now I want to modify our website. And there's a really, really great feature in static web apps that I think is super unique and actually I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, and this is integrated to GitHub. So I want to be a really good developer. I'm going to create a new branch. Okay. And I'm going to call it SWA demo. And in my branch, I want to change some code because we want to make some website changes. Maybe the organization doesn't like my website or maybe they're saying that, um, I don't know, my website's too complex or whatever. We just want to update the website. So we've seen my website. Okay. It's cool. But maybe I just want to simplify it. Um, all right. Or maybe we want to test another version of the website. So I'm going to go and just add in some little HTML. I'm going to update my index file. Uh, I should put in some really good commit notes, but I'm feeling a bit lazy. I want to commit this directly to the new branch I've just created. So I'm going to do that. It's committed my changes. And if I go into pull request here, it sees I've committed that. Now, again, you can use any other IDE that you prefer, VS Code, Visual Studio, or Code Spaces, and this will do the same thing. Um, but I want to compare my pull request. And yep, I can see all the changes I made. I've taken out a lot of code, some big changes. Um, yep, I'm totally happy with that. Um, we can just see that there's a lot. So I'm going to create the pull request. Now, remember, this is going to run through my workflow. So it's already set up my workflow. It's already set up my CI. So it runs some checks on my code. So I'm being a really good developer. I've opened up a feature branch. I'm making those changes. And now I've created my PR. And 
And this is automatically running that workflow for me. We can go in the details and we can watch it run. Now, why is this really important? A, it's a unique feature, like number one. Number two, it's a great DevOps practice. Because remember, we want to shift left. So if we want to shift left, we need to think about things like, what kind of testing are we doing? Are we doing linting on our code? Um, you know, do we want to do unit testing, integration testing, any kind of end-to-end -end tests? This is going to be great to do right here in the build process. This is against my PR. So again, this is a unique feature. So we're going to let this run. It's running all my checks. I can click into it and see the details of it. It's setting up the job. It's running my actions. It's checking out my code. It's built my code. And it's actually deploying my changes to that static web app now. So hopefully it gets done in a couple seconds. Um, it's all going to be internet and running runner dependent. Uh, but I could go into my pull request and I can watch it run. This is probably a good time to have a cup of coffee. Uh, but actually, as it's run this, um, this GitHub Actions bot has just popped up a comment. And I hope you saw that at home. So it's created, a, the bots told me it's created a staging site. So with every PR I open and run through my checks, I get a staging site. So this is very similar to deployment slots that you get with Azure, um, Azure Web Apps. So if I click on this, um, it gives me the same address as I had before. It has a little hash three at the end. Um, and again, you can bring your own custom domain name. So this is my original website and it's the name up here. Um, I have a more simplified website and it just adds a, a hyphen three there to just differentiate it from um, my previous website. So again, much simpler version. Again, you can do anything. But what this has effectively done is we've gone in, we've created a brand new static website We've deployed it via GitHub because that's where our code sits. We've created a new branch, opened a PR, and we've been given a staging slot, a staging site. So we can test our website against production. We don't have to deploy our code to production. And that is all baked into this. And that is super, super cool. And that's what gets me really, really excited about static web apps. So if I want to make any changes to my website, hopefully not as drastic as that in the near future, but I have that ability to do that, test it. And then you know what? All my checks have passed. Um, it's built my job, it's checked all of it, I can now deploy it and merge that pull request. Now, so when I merge that pull request, pull request, it will actually change my production site. So if I were to go back into the portal, after I hit merge pull request, it would deploy it to production and that staging site would then go away. Um, so I can deploy it, I believe it's three staging sites on the free plan. Um, so I could do several pull requests at a time, which is super, super cool. So I'm a massive fan of that feature and a massive fan of, of static websites. And there's a lot to offer for everyone. So before we get going anywhere else, I just want to cover off one quick thing. There are some amazing resources out there for you. Docs.microsoft.com. The product group have put together a great, great resource and they put so much documentation. There's some shows on the DevOps lab on channel nine with deploying static web apps with Azure DevOps. And you go to learn.microsoft.com and you can learn all about static web apps and do some really cool training. So thank you everyone. And back to you, Chloe. Thank you so much, April. Oh my gosh, you were not kidding about automating all the things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned at the top of your talk that everyone defines DevOps differently. Couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. I feel like I get a different answer from everyone. How do you, how do you define it when someone asks you that? I know this is kind of like the ultimate question, but uh, in this case, after this talk, I'm thinking a lot of automation, it sounds like. Yeah, but I think for me, it's driving value. And that's different from everyone. And I've been in, I've worked for organizations where value is different than maybe a different organization, maybe depending on your industry or what you're delivering. And I think it's that value. And you take any human in, in IT and in tech and say, right, I run storage. Well, what's their value they're delivering? And when you teach them to automate things, sometimes they can't automate something. Uh, but they start to automate something. But then what, what value are they delivering? Storage is a huge deal, right? Storage is the backbone to pretty much everything we do. Um, so for me, it's that value, driving value. Because if people don't use what you're doing and they're not happy with it, it what's the point of doing it? Yeah, value teamwork, automation, yeah. three things that I love. We have a question here from Cindy. Once you merge the PR, does it remove the staging site automatically? Yes, it does. So um, I didn't do it in the demo, but yes, it does just because of timings. But yeah, it will remove that staging site. So if you have multiple PRs going in, and if you're on like the free plan, which I think has three staging sites, I'd have to double check that. Um, it's in the documentation. Um, so if you have more than three PRs going, you'd have to close a PR, get it merged. Um, and all that stuff. But yeah, that will go from the staging site into production and then close it. So it frees up that slot, basically. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for joining us today.